Hi, I'm Louise Fletcher and before I get to this week's video, I am teaching a free workshop starting the 1st of September with a welcome call the night before on the 31st of August. You can come along and join us. The link is in the description below or you can just go to my website at Louise Fletcher Art and look at the For Artists tab and there you can sign up. Come along, click the link, join us and let's crack on with the video. I was asked a brilliant question recently on YouTube and I want to share my answer. The question was from Kathleen who said, I totally understand following your intuition, which is something I talk about a lot, but there's one issue I have. While playing, I forget about composition. So how do you balance your enthusiasm for following intuition with the necessity of composition? Or as an artist, does composition come naturally to you? without much thought. There's so much to unpack in this question. Thank you, Kathleen, because it's a great question. But the last line of that, as an artist, does the composition come naturally to you without much cognitive thought? Yes and no. So I think this captures a, set, a, a question that many of us have when we start out painting, or an idea that many of us have, which is that real artists, professional artists, know what they're doing all the time and are born with that. As an artist, I was just born with that knowledge of what composition is. And of course, I was not, and I do not have a gift for naturally creating good compositions. I do have to think about it. But on the other hand, yes, I have worked at composition for so long. I have made so many paintings. I have learned so much about art. I have studied other artists. I have taken classes and learned from great teachers. So yes, I do somewhat have the ability to make design decisions without really thinking about it that consciously. But that only comes with practice. So initially, when I learned about composition, it was very clunky. It was, I always say it's a bit like driving a car. I would clunk into gear and then move along and then stall and everything I did I had to think about really consciously and that is very challenging because if you're trying to be in flow and intuitive and natural and also stopping to think I found that switch really difficult to do at first so if you're feeling that there's nothing unusual about that. That's the way it should feel. As you get more and more used to it, you just find yourself naturally putting the right size shape somewhere or putting a color that's just right next to another color or balancing something in the composition without really thinking about it. But a lot of study and learning goes into being able to do that without thinking. And often when I do a demo, people say, oh, but how come your demos look so good when you're not even trying? That's why, because when you're experienced, you can't unlearn everything you've learned. So even when you're playing and being intuitive, you're going to naturally make some decisions that work from a compositional and a color perspective. But what I have found is that there are two ways of working. So there's an intuitive way when I'm completely just playing, having fun, splashing paint around, absolutely not a care in the world. That's at the earliest stages. But then I will step back and assess and see if I have something that I want to bring out, emphasize, or something I want to tone down or whether it's time to keep going because there's nothing happening yet. And I find as the painting process goes on and the painting comes clearer and clearer to me what it's gonna be, I get slower and more considerate of what I'm doing because I'm working my way towards the finish line, which I can see at some point. And now I'm making teeny tiny adjustments. I just don't like that pencil line where it shows through there. That tiny bit of gray needs to change to a slightly lighter tiny bit of gray just to give me satisfaction that the whole thing is working. When I'm asking myself questions though, I'm, I'm not asking myself technically. I'm not saying, is this composition balanced? Is there a focal point? Have I used the golden mean? I'm not doing any of that. I'm stepping back and asking myself how I feel because when I finish a painting, I know it. I get a, a, a feeling inside of, oh yes, I recognize you, you are now done. So I'm always asking myself, what's the feeling I'm having? Is it working for me? Is it more working for me or less working for me at the moment? And if it's 
less working for me? Are there any parts that are working for me? And if so, why? So it's a constant interrogation almost of the painting. We can never know the whole direction. I don't know what my painting is going to look like in the end. I just know what I need to do now, next, to get it closer to the feeling that I want. If I know the emotion I want to express, which I sometimes do, then it's an easy question to ask. Is this painting getting closer to feeling like that for me? Or is it getting further away? If I'm making abstract landscapes, does this feel like the place I'm referring to? Or, or is it far away from that at the moment? And then you have your next question. Okay, what can I do to get it closer? Sometimes I'm purely working intuitively with no guideline. That can be stickier for me. That's a longer process going backwards and forwards with my questioning. But what it comes down to, and I've kind of got my process into four stages that might be helpful. I begin by experimenting with my materials, whatever I'm using, intuitively until I understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Then I work intuitively with that idea in mind. So that's stage one. I might all know what I'm doing from the beginning. If I know I'm working on a series of paintings about the landscape around my home, stage one is taken care of. I know what I'm doing. Stage two, I work intuitively with that idea in mind. So just play with some things and see what comes up. C, stepping back to assess how things look. And then D, switching backwards and forwards between that intuitive play, stepping back to assess things until I feel like the painting has reached its resolution. For me, it doesn't work to just paint intuitively, just picking colors I feel like, throwing paint onto a canvas or board in any way I feel like. For me, that feels too empty. It just feels like finger painting, like a five-year-old could do. And it's fun and I love doing it, but it's not enough because I also have to have the thoughtful part of me in a painting. I want all of me in my paintings. So the excited childlike part of me that loves to fling paint around, I want to also have the calm and more thoughtful part of me that likes to think things through and have some philosophical basis to what I'm doing. If I want that in my paintings, I need to balance these two ways of being. I hope that helps. My free workshop, Find Your Joy, begins on August 31st, the evening of. We go for nine days. It's incredible. You won't want to miss it. There are assignments, there are lessons, there are live Q&A sessions with me and there is a buzzing community of other artists to interact with and learn from. So find the link in the description below this video, in the post or comments in Facebook and in the link in my bio on Instagram and we can't wait to see you there. Bye bye.